Hello, my friends. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the DNA results of a European farmer that has been extensively discussed online. And I am currently talking about Otzi the Iceman. There are some actual reconstructions of Otzi the, Ice, the Iceman. Uh, all of them look sort of like this. Looks very, very interesting. Kind of looks like an old uh, Irish looking guy. Uh, very rugged with a big beard and uh, kind of sort of very archaic looking guy doesn't quite look mediterranean and doesn't re doesn't really look what i imagine these european neolithic farmers to look like he's actually a bronze age individual and in terms of the uh groups the modern groups he resembles most he most closely resembles sardinians here you can see with g25 the closest modern inhabitants in europe to him are sardinians followed by that are various southern europeans such as french people from corsica or basques or spanish people it's various Southern Europeans that resemble this individual, but most close people to this uh, to this culture, most close um, people to this cluster of humans, this cluster of ancient individuals from Italy are Sardinians. Uh, so this individual from Italy has haplogroup. Uh, let's see, uh, his Y DNA is J uh, G two A, and with my straight predictor, that is also the haplogroup that he gets. He scores G, um, G and his mitochondrial lineage is actually k1 right and for the time period that he lives he lived in the 34 to 31 centuries before the common era so that falls actually it is labeled as bronze age but i am not sure if i would exactly call this the bronze age to me this is more like the chalcolithic period i wouldn't exactly call this the bronze age but nonetheless here he is labeled italy bronze age perhaps that perhaps in italy the bronze age be, uh, started a little bit earlier but in the context of, say, the Baltic period, this would be, uh, for them, this would be the Chalcolithic or maybe even the Neolithic period. So, but it look, I, I guess for Italy, this would be the Bronze Age. And he is definitely a farmer. He does not have any Indo-European ancestry. Now let's get into his results with my trade predictor. First, we're going to look at the ethnic calculator results. Keep in mind that these ethnicity calculations are done on the basis of only 85 SNPs. So they're not very good. And based on these 85 SNPs, he scores closest to Turkish people. Definitely very far from reality. Followed by that are Hispanic Hispanic folks, Israelite, Punjabi Jat, Sarmatian from Euros. So it's quite far from reality. Definitely very, very distant from reality. Uh, but you cannot really get very, very close to reality with 85 SNPs. So it's unfortunate we could not get a very pre precise result for the ethnicity with my trade predictor okay let's see what he scores for the shakot calculator this will be a little bit better because my shakot tends to be quite precise and here he is scoring brown eye color 56 percent likelihood of brown eyes 25 percent likelihood of darkest brown eyes so he's he got some some likelihood of black or darkest brown eye color but most likely his eye color is regular brown uh there is 50 percent likelihood of hazel eyes but most likely once again he, most likely his eye color is regular brown uh, when it comes to green or lighter, that's pretty much out of the picture. That's very, very improbable. For hair color, it looks like he most likely has dark brown hair. The likelihood of that is 73%. Uh, for black hair, the likelihood of that is 22%. For anything lighter than dark brown, the likelihood of that is once again very, very improbable, very little. Uh, even light brown hair is very, very unlikely. Only 2.7% likelihood of light brown hair. And for blonde or red, that is completely out of the picture. When it comes to skin color likelihood distribution, it looks like he's got olive or Mediterranean skin. Uh, that is predicted with the likelihood of 78%. He also has 18% likelihood of white skin, which is quite big. But when it comes to likelihood for palest skin or light brown or dark brown skin, that is completely out of the picture. So in terms of coloring, it looks like he has olive skin, dark brown hair and regular brown eyes that looks like a sardinian he looks quite similar to modern uh, sardinians i would say or modern uh, maybe southern french people or spanish people when it comes to his hair texture his predicted ha predicted hair texture is curly hair keep in mind that with low quality files the predicted uh, predicted hair texture will be a lot less accurate uh, anything predicted any any predicted trait will be a lot less accurate with low quality files but it will be especially especially felt when it comes to 
uh, really polygenic traits such as hair texture or ethnicity estimate. Things that rely on on a large number of SNPs will be felt. Uh, the the lack of data will be felt much greater when it comes to the prediction of these traits. So when it comes to hair texture, we can't really we can't really use this estimation. Uh, we can't really rely on this estimation too much. So it looks like he does not have blue eye haplotype two, but he does have blue eye haplotype one, and he does not have blue eye haplotype four. Very very interesting. And he's not genotyped for anything relevant to MC1R, so we don't really know if he has any predisposition uh, to having uh, ginger. Uh, ginger hair. Okay, now let's go ahead and see his phenotype oracle. Let's see what phenotypes he scores closest to and what mixture of different phenotypes he scores for the oracle. This is the closest phenotype to him at a distance of 0 0.443. Uh, I don't quite recall what ethnicity this phenotype uh, occurs in most frequently. I think this is like a Western Mediterranean phenotype, like a Spanish. It looks Spanish to me. Followed by that is an alpinate phenotype, which is kind of like French or a uh, Swiss. Followed by that is a another like um, Central European phenotype. So he is closest to various dark colored Mediterranean people. And for mixtures of different phenotypes, the closest mixture to him is a mixture of 50% alpinate plus this 50% Western Mediterranean. Or a mixture of 50% West Mediterranean plus 50% West Mediterranean. So these two have equal distances. So these two mixtures have roughly the same distance to him. Uh, this mixture, 50% this plus 50% that, comes at a slightly larger distance. So here the distance increases a little bit. Very, very, very interesting phenotype oracle. Okay, uh, let's see the biomarkers results. Let's see what he scores for that. So it looks like he has a predisposition to slightly lower level of vitamin D. Okay. A slightly higher level of LDL cholesterol, which is unfortunate. Slightly below average level of HDL cholesterol. Okay, once again, not really good. Slightly above average level of glucose, unfortunate. Uh, nothing was found for hemoglobin, unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate because it's a low-quality low file. Uh, slightly above average blood pressure, okay. Uh, nothing was found for iron, very unfortunate. Nothing was found for sex hormone binding globulin, unfortunate. And he's got slightly below average level of red blood cell count in the blood. Okay, definitely very interesting. Let's see the polygenic risk scores real quick. Let's see what he scores for those. So it looks like nothing relevant was found for leukemia, unfortunate. Uh, he's got slightly above average score for vitiligo, slightly above average score for myopia. Looks like he's got a slightly below average score for primary biliary cirrhosis, a average score for stroke, a above average score for male pattern hair loss. Nothing was found for atrial fibrilla fibrillation. He's got a slightly below average score for deep vein thrombosis. He's got a typical average score for bipolar type 1. He's got a typical average score for schizophrenia. He's got a very high score for type 2 diabetes, which is definitely very interesting. So one thing we have to look out for is the risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a high score for Alzheimer's. He's got a average score for multiple sclerosis. Uh, one risk pattern for breast cancer of 10, which is pretty typical. Typical score for testicular cancer. Um, Nothing relevant was found for celiac disease. Nothing relevant was found for GSS. Uh, it looks like four risk planets for Crohn's out of 10. Pretty typical. Nothing relevant was found for Reifenstein's. And nothing relevant was found for Parkinson's. So the, on the only things we really, really have to watch out for is the risk, risk score for type 2 diabetes and the risk score for Alzheimer's. We're going to look at that a little bit later in this video. So it looks like he has a predisposition to higher number of, of D2 dopamine receptors. Uh, that is based on, it looks like, it looks like two genotypes, so it's not based on a lot of data. Actually, no, it looks like it's based on only one genotype, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so there is definitely not a lot of data in this file. He does not have dwarfism. Okay, that's very interesting. So you can see it's not a very high quality file. Uh, he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so, so he's got short form 5 HTTLPR and uh, slight increase in the risk of depression because of that. He's got slightly higher odds of autism. Definitely very interesting. It looks like nothing relevant for OXTR and empathy was found in this file. Uh, he was scoring quite high for type 2 diabetes, and we can definitely see why that is. Uh, that's because he has all of these genotypes that correlate to a increased risk for type 2 diabetes. It looks like he's got this genotype, which also leads to an increase in risk for Alzheimer's. So now we understand why he was scoring so high for Alzheimer's as well. Uh, and it looks like he's got European genotype in EDAR, so he's got no shallow-shaped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. 
He's got this gene tab, which leads to slightly thicker eyebrows and longer uh, mid-face length. Definitely very interesting. Uh, for Vitiligo panel, it looks like nothing shows up here, but he was scoring higher than average score for that. I think that might have into, might have something to do with his genotype in Tyr. Let's see, uh, because Tyr also contributes to Vitiligo score. Let's see, uh, what does he score for Tyr? Yes, so he has zero light color variance here and has zero light color variance here. That does also contribute to the score for Vitiligo. So that, that's a part of the reason he was scoring higher than average for Vitiligo, because darker dark color variance in Tyr contribute to increase uh, risk score for Vitiligo. So that makes sense. Uh, he does not have any risk variance for holoprison cephaly, so basically doesn't have any risk variance for, uh, for um, cyclopia. He has one risk variance for San Filippo syndrome. Wow. Wow. So I found something really crazy in this, in this genome. He carries a risk variance for San Filippo syndrome. Um, let me look that up for you, and I'll show you what that is. So essentially... Like kids with this, it's like it's called uh, childhood dementia. Kids with this have developmental delays and they don't uh, grow up, they end up dying um, before they reach puberty. It's very sad. So, he has a risk variant for that, very unfortunate. Um, for HLA gene panel, it looks like he has a predisposition to lower odds of autoimmune disease, definitely very good. So, he's quite healthy. Uh, he's got some sort of protection from autoimmune disease based on his genotype in HLA. And he's got zero APOB risk variance for, for hypercholesteromia out of four total. So he does not have a predisposition to higher lipids levels. Definitely very good. No risk variance for ADL or muscular dystrophy myopathy is really good. And no risk variance for color blindness. Really, really good. For bio traits panel, <laughs> looks like he has wet earwax and normal body odor. Does not have the East Asian allele that protects from smell, smelly body odor. Definitely really good to see. And for blood group panel, it looks like his predicted blood type is either type O or type A, but it is difficult to predict blood type on the basis of only three genotypes. Unfortunately, here there is only three genotypes that that play uh, that were found, and when you only have three genotypes, it's very difficult to determine the blood type. So, on the basis of the, these three genotypes, most likely it's type O or type A, but then again, it's very difficult to determine exactly. Uh, well, thank you for uh, listening to the end of my video. Thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks for, you know, supporting me here. And um, I also want to remind you that this file, I will not leave the link to download this file in the description because this file is already on my Google Drive. I already made a video on this individual. It is already on my drive. But anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you get my tool. Um, make sure you support me financially. Uh, because it is it is difficult to continue developing this and you know continue subjugating my life to this work um thanks for supporting me guys it means a lot thanks for watching goodbye